is Feedback Gaming. Welcome back for a new series where we're going to be playing as the Soviet Union to show you a multiplayer style min maxing min maxing strategy for the Soviet Union. So I've played a f at least three full length Soviet Union games and I am fairly confident I've got a relatively good strategy. There's going to be lots and lots of ifs and buts here. Now, I am playing with the AI, but we have to imagine if this was a multiplayer strategy, multiplayer game. So there would be a lot of rules set up to prevent a lot of exploitative strategies, which I won't show in this video because they won't help you, because in all fairness, they are banned in most multiplayer games anyway. I say most, but we do play on my Discord and on my multiplayer streams with a rule set. I will hint at some of the rules that we use as we go through. I'm not going to explain them all because it's a absolutely huge list but i i will go through this video and i will throw some suggestions out there the reason why i'm doing certain things as i am i'm trying to foresee some of the comments that some of you guys could give me about this uh game because i imagine probably a few people are gonna say why don't you attack poland early why don't you attack romania early why don't you do yada 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 yada, yada? why don't you do a lot of things early well i'm not going to do a lot of things early uh, because in most cases, the rules forbid me from doing that. Is that covered all the blank? Yeah, is that good? Yeah, okay, that's good. All right, let's go. So, first of all, I'm going to do this classic same old thing where I just sort out my army first. I will position a few troops on the, the Turkey border. And then position most of the troops in central Russian regions. I'm not going to give them a garrison order because I don't want them to be wiggling around all the time, burning attrition. Because if they're not railroading and they're just moving normally, it burns um, it burns your equipment through attrition. So I don't want that to happen. So if you notice, I've railroaded them. That's me. They'll move into the same position. We are going to do the five-year plan first because we are going to focus on civilian factories initially and then do the purge. The purge is always something you want to do as early as possible because you want the bad effects to wear off. But initially, the five-year plan is really good because it gets you extra civilian factories. The earlier you get those civilian factories, the better. Same old machine tools, construction, and electronic engineering. Is it engineering? Is it? Yeah, it is. We've got two navies positioned on the west coast. We're going to merge those up. And we also have another navy positioned here too, which we are going to merge up. There is another fleet base here. That we're going to merge and base them here. Why here? Because it's because what will happen eventually is you will end up at war with Japan. And there's a potential that they could try and take out your boat. So you, maybe you want to make these boats survive for a little bit longer than you, you in first envision. I'm going to focus primarily on guns. Guns, guns, guns. Three lots of motorized, three lots of light tank. Uh, the strategic bombers. I'm going to keep that for now just to keep the production retention high. Not really something that we need that desperately, but we'll keep it as it is. We've got support equipment. We can make a little trickle of that. And a little bit of artillery is probably needed too. So let's take off a few artillery. Yeah, that'll do. We want to ideally get three rows of guns, which I will explain later why we're doing that. We're going to make sure we deploy all our new boats into the Black Sea, which I will explain why we're doing that later. Feels a shame to cancel off these ships because a lot of them are partially constructed anyway, so might as well just complete the construction and make some convoys. And when we're done as well, we will sort of make some battleships, which I will explain later why we are doing that. Hmm, why is Dave doing that? Hmm. All right, so it's telling me these divisions that are assigned. We're going to start training some new divisions. It's this template which is, consists of infantry battalions and artillery, which will be your bread and butter, which I will explain later in the video. So the first plan is to build civilian factories. The first thing you want to do is find somewhere where you can build four, at least four, civilian factories. Because that means... Now, I don't know the calculation for this, but if you build up the infrastructure to the max, you get the maximum speed boost for producing factories, which you probably are aware of, which they're introduced in patch 1.3.1.3. But if you construct four factories, four is the minimum, you'll get your money's worth back for the civilian, for the infrastructure you construct. So in this scenario, we can build five infrastructure 
and it will get six factories. So in this case, this is perfect. I'm going to build, we'll say we'll build five civilians and one military. We're going to find another one though. So we're looking for one that has at least four, four or more. Usually they're in the same location. I'm trying to avoid building on this border because this is where the Germans are going to attack. We don't want to give them free factories. That would be suicidal. So ideally we want to build it. So this one's a good one too. So I can build five here. Let's do that. One military and mostly civvies. This is a little bit of a mixed strategy that I did before because usually I'd make all civilian factories. But I like to trickle in a few more military factories just so we can keep the production of our guns nice and high. Which, yet again, I will explain later in the video. Or in the late in the series, why I'm doing that. I'm going to trade with the allies as well. In this case, that's Malay. I don't want Malay, actually. I want to go for United Kingdom. So that way we'll get the maximum amount of civilian factories for my allies, which in this case will be the UK. So there are all my fleets, my uh, navy, and we're going to merge all the air wings as well. It doesn't matter where you merge them, just put them into one location. Uh, I found an optimal way of working the Air Force, which I'll show you later in the video. There's lots of laters in this video. For some reason they don't move when you merge them. You have to manually tell them to left-click and right-click to move to home base. I think it's because they can't make it through here because it's outside of their range. So you have to right-click. So you have to hold control and right-click to assign this as the main port. Yep. All right. Move everyone here. So we've got the guys on the turkey border here, we've got the main army position here, and then we've got an eastern bunch of troops as well. In fact, now I think about it, you guys can be with the main army. So it's important there are certain areas of the map that are covered. Now, in the rules that we use, turkey can't join the axis, okay? So, I guess in this scenario, defending here is a waste of time, but there is some instances where turkey just joined the axis as well. So... I guess having these troops defending here are a good idea. What else are we going to do? So there's the troops in the east here as well. So we're going to cover Manchu. So there we go. we got the troops. So I think we'll split this off into defense and attack. So I think what we'll do is we'll call this the spearhead, which I like to make aggressive. So this is what you're going to use to punch holes in the enemy's front lines. This is the front, which is going to consist of most of your divisions, which is going to be here. Uh, see, I'm prioritizing the spearhead because the spearhead always needs to have maximum supplies and maximum strength. The front is also important, but not as important. And then there's a final, which there will be reserves or defense. Defense, reserves, which yet again aren't as important, so low priority. There you go. Not actually as organized as I would like, but we'll organize them later in the video as we go through the whole process of setting everything up and whatnot. Okay, so there's a few divisions here that I missed too. So we're going to railroad them here. Remember, I'm not just right-clicking. I'm also pressing B to railroad. Because remember, if they manually just walk, they're going to take attrition as they walk. You don't want to do that because you're wasting guns. So as you can see now, now we're a bit far behind on guns. We are producing as maximum as we can. And we're going to work on that. Focusing on artillery too. A little bit on support equipment and tanks and motorized just to fill any extra, well, extra strength loss. Gonna make sure we grab all of our tank divisions too, which I will explain a little bit later. Uh, do, 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 do. Trying to find all my tank divisions now. So there's a motorized there, which they only start with one motorized. And here are all the tanks. Now I'm gonna explain later why we're gonna select the tanks and split them off. One, to make a spearhead, but there is another reason why, which I will explain a little bit later. We're also gonna make an extra tank division here. And we'll assign all new divisions here. In fact, no, infantry is going to be here. Once we've sorted out all the reinforcement issues, we will assign more infantry, which I'll show you later. So here we go. Just to explain again, we're making infrastructure to therefore make the factories quicker, uh, to build the factories quicker. And as you see, I can build them in that particular order. Um, yeah, that yeah, looks good. By the way, guys, I'm always looking for feedback. If you guys want to drop a comment below, tell me anything that I've done incorrectly that you would think would be more efficient. Let me know in the comments below. And also, guys, don't forget to uh, also like and subscribe this video. Come on, guys. If you want this video to do well, you need to make sure you like the video. Anyway, we've merged the Navy up here. Um, this guy's pretty good. He's got iron side, extra 10% armor. Okay, I think we'll go for that guy and put them on escort here. 
Yep. Making those boats. Gonna assign them Sevastopol. Making a few convoys too. You don't start off with many convoys, so you need to make a few just to keep the supply nice and tip top. Okay, so at this point, I like to go for support equipment, which I'll explain a little bit later in the video why I'm doing that. Oh! Dave, you seem to be saying that quite a lot. Why is that? Hmm. Hmm. And again, all will be explained in this or later future videos. All right, railroading all my tanks to Tikvin. This is just a motorized. I think we'll convert this to a tank. I think as well, we'll make the tank priority to, to keep the supplies rolling in. We'll make it elite. So that means it gets the most supplies nice and quick. Okay, so now we're doing the Great Purge, okay? So you've got to be very strategic on what you get rid of. The first one's an easy choice, because you either lose political power, or you lose the communist support, or the national unity. Now, I wouldn't recommend getting the national unity guy to get rid of him, because keeping that national unity high is good if you're losing against the Germans, which you need to hold on to as much land as possible to keep pushing the Germans back. Because remember, national unity is... Uh, is a number that shows you how much land you can lose before you capitulate. So you want to try and survive as long as possible while uh, the Germans taking as much land as possible to try and repel them and hold them back. In most multiplayer games, most games are most games are decided but with between Germany and the Soviet Union. Don't get me wrong, everyone else's role in the war is important, but in most cases, it is important, really, really important, that the, the Soviet Union lasts for as long as possible. So in this case, I think this guy is the worst. I mean, you don't need communist support. We're already really communist. Why do I need to get more communist support? Madness. Anywho, here we go. So we're going to do the Great Purge and we'll wait for all the events to fire. I'm going to go for... Now at this stage, I've played with Disperse and Concentrated. And in all fairness, I think Concentrated is actually more advantageous for the Soviet Union. Why? Because you just tend to produce lots of solid guns. So I just think... The way it works is, Concentrated is better if you're not switching out your lines. Now right now, we're not switching out our lines because we're going to stick with these guns for a very long time. So I'm actually kind of tempted to go for Concentrated just for the extra additional, because it's an extra 5% per tech. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So it's 25% extra production. In all fairness, I'm sorry, but Dispersed is the meta right now. So it just tends to be the most effective. Because in all fairness, you don't want to get stuck on making old guns and old tech and old tanks and stuff. You want to keep moving forward. Anyway, so first of all, we've got our first political power. You've got to put it on partial mobilization. You have to. It improves the construction speed of your factories. It reduces the penalties. And it uses less consumer goods. So that means you can produce quicker for your economy. It's all down to jumpstarting that economy as quickly as possible. And as you can probably see, now we're pumping out a lot of gear. Get a lot from trade as well, which is good. So make some extra divisions here. These are our front lines in the east. We're going to put these on reserve because I don't think these are going to see much action initially. Okay, so another event for the Great Purge here. So this one's a bit of a trickier choice, okay? You never want to pick the bottom one because that will cause a civil war, which is going to cause a nightmare fighting the civil war on two fronts as well as fighting the Germans. And if the Germans see you on the civil war, they're going to attack you, which is pretty smart. So, in all fairness, both of these have big advantages and disadvantages. First of all, this guy, uh, you're losing the mass assault guy, which isn't a big deal because there's another doctrine guy you can get anyway. The defense guy losing is kind of a pain. An extra 10% defense is actually pretty damn good. So... Alexandria is the guy you don't want to lose, but all the other ones are pretty bad anyway. Now, you probably think, oh, I'll just go for... You don't want to go for that one. So, and then you got this one. So, okay, let me just have a little quick look. Yeah, the guy that you don't want to lose here is the armor genius. So, it goes... So, when you go for a... An army specialist. There you go. Specialist, expert, and genius. Genius is the best. He has the best stats. And you can just see that. I can't pronounce his name. Konstantin Rokosovsky. He gets a 50% extra attack for armor and defense. 
he's just so good. He's insanely good. And the games are just sorted, are resolved by tanks. So at the end of the day, you have to get rid of the defense guy. Now, don't get me wrong, both of those guys are equally good. I mean, the defense guy is awesome because you're going to be defending against the Germans. So, I think about it, the defense guy is actually pretty good. But then again, it depends how much tanks you're using. If you just choose to ignore tanks and just focus primarily on infantry, then I guess maybe it's viable doing that, maybe? I'm not sure, but from my experience, having the offensive with, with really strong tank divisions is important, and having the armor genius is, is just really, really convenient. Anywho, how are we doing for guns now? 27,000, awesome. So right now we're making artillery, which is good, because we need them, because they're part of our standard infantry. Working on working our guns back. Yet again, the light tanks is something we're working on too. Very slowly but truly working them back. You can see right now, we're actually catching up on our production, which is good. Okay, so next tank is important. But at this stage, it's probably going to be a better idea to work on the next factory output. Yet again, keeping that production nice and high is important. Okay, so the Trial of 21, another purge. So we've got an option here. A partisan reduction is pretty useless. Uh, air safety is nice. Bad weather is very good. Uh, air reformer, blah, 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 blah. Nah. And then we've got naval experience, air superiority guy, close air support, and army division recovery rate. Army division recovery rate is actually kind of useful. But you kind of decide here if you want to get rid of... Hmm. I think in this case, I think I'd probably go for the partisan reduction guy. Get rid of the air bonuses as well. Yep, we'll go for that one. I think the division recovery rate is just too important. Particularly if you're on the defensive too. Division recovery rate, if you're not already aware, is how quickly you recover your organization after either attacking or defending. So if it turns out that you're retreating away, what will happen is, is he's retreating, he's re regaining his organization as he retreats. And yet again, as you're defending as the Soviet Union, that's what tends to be what's going to be happening. You're losing, you're getting pushed back, you want to restore that organization as quickly as possible, so therefore you can be all prepared for the next attack or defense. So right now, as we're waiting for this, we've not had much to do. There you go, the Great Purge is done. Okay, that was actually nice and smooth. So what you need to focus on now is you need to get an extra tech slot. So you've got two choices. You have Positive Heroism, which gives you the guy that we just talked about, the, the armor genius. Or we have Collectivist Propaganda, which gives a massive boost to National Unity. Now, uh, National Unity is important. But when it comes down to it, this armor guy is important. It's almost like you're, you're choosing between defense or attack. And it, I don't know, if you think to yourself, if you're a decent player, you're going to focus on defense, offense, and as well as defense. So, I don't know, this is my guy. I like this dude. And you also get with this research reduction, extra recruitable population, and the research slot. With this one, you get a tiny amount of recruitable. Construction speed, which is pretty good as well. Uh, women in aviation, meh. Yeah, so, when it comes down to it, this is good, but, I don't know, the armor guy, the positive, the, the armor genius is just too good to say no to. Anyway, so what we're we doing, so we're going to slow the game down a little bit to four speed, and I'm going to have a little look where we can place our next factories. So this one's good, we can build four here. We can build six here, this is a good one. We're going to go here, build a uh, military and a bunch of civilians. In my previous games, I'd only focus on civilian factories because getting that economy jump-started at the start of the game is really important. Pumping out those civilian factories to later move on to military in 1939 or 1940 in preparation for the Germans arrive. Because I'm trying something a bit different right now by mixing in a little bit, what will probably happen is I'll have a little bit more extra production already for when the Germans do arrive. So I think this might be the better strategy to try and mix and match. Okay. Captain of industry, no-brainer. Civilian factory, extra 10% construction and infrastructure. Both insane. You need those. So right now, one, two, three, four, five. Five of those are going to be an increase in production speed. Don't forget as well, increases in production speed also equates to um, cheaper overall. So not only is it making it 10% faster, it's also making it 10% cheaper as well because you're using less production. Therefore, you can use more production on other things when that is successfully researched. Disperse industry is done. I'm going to go for the one below it. Remember, every time you research disperse industry... Oh, an extra tank. Every time you research disperse industry, or if you research... 
Um, yeah, every time you research disperse industry, or if you research um, concentrate industry, you get extra slots. So what will tend to happen is this. So right now we've got the maxed out ones, which this one, this is this one here. So this one you can go back to and build more civilian factories in again. Here too, here too. So because it expands the amount of factories per state, you can go back and just build factories in the ones that have already got 100% infrastructure to get the maximum amount of speed out of them. It's also a good idea to keep an eye on Germany as well, to look at what focuses they're going for as well. Because there's instances where they could go for an early attack. Okay, so at this point, we have to decide between extra factories or, in this case, extra research. So with collectivist propaganda, you're pretty good because all you need is ar armor effort. Um, actually, it requires all of the following. So you need armor effort and collectivist propaganda. So you can get to that slot a lot quicker. But in all fairness, for the bonuses you get here, it's more worthwhile to go for these. I think I'm going to go for armor effort first. Armament. Just so I can get the extra four factories. And then we can go for the research slot. Okay, we've got an extra partition that we can assign. Now, in all fairness, I like to go for the doctrine guy. Trying to think if there's anything else I could go for at this point. I don't think there is. No. So I want to go for the military theorist. Reduces land doctrine and extra army experience. I'm trying to think if that's going to be worthwhile. Hmm. No, it's not, actually. We're going to hold back on that one. And now I think about it, depending on how early the Spanish Civil War fires, you might be better off going for positive heroism. Which I will explain a little bit later. In fact, now we've got a little gap and there's not nothing happening. I, I imagine it's probably a good time to explain the reason why I've gone for um, support equipment early. And as well as I should have gone for positive heroism early. The reason is, is simply that what we'll do is you'll sign the armor genius, him. And then you'll get this support equipment which will give you an extra defense and breakthrough. Which you'll be able to use in the Spanish Civil War with your tank divisions. Uh, the Spanish Civil War in this scenario is firing really late, uh, but depending on... I guess that the later it fires, the better it is for you, because you can be more prepared, and you won't have the negative effects of the purge as well, so... It depends, really. I mean, in this scenario, it's going to be more beneficial. Um, yeah, so I'm going to hold on to the military power, political power. Yeah. So, excavation is a good one, but in all honesty, there's nothing we can gain from that, really, apart from more rubber, which we don't have any anyway to begin with, so it's pointless. Okay, so where do we research? So, engineers are important, and uh, maintenance are also important, so I think we'll go for maintenance, too. Okay, I'm going to go for positive heroism. So that's lowered the effect of the purge. Uh, radio is a really good one because of reinforce rate. So we'll go for that one now because we'll use that in the Civil War. Now we're doing with guns. 2,000. We're almost catched up. So now we can make some more extra tank divisions, some extra infantry divisions as we move forward, which is good. We could be working on the next version of the tank as well. But the problem is, is if we switch out to the new tank... We're going to lose all the production retention. So it's just better off to produce lots of the older tanks. So it's how I prefer to play it anyway. I mean, if you could research the the level three, the level 2 light tank as quickly as possible. And then switch out to it. I guess that's... I guess you could do that. Um, but then again, you're losing some production because you're losing the production retention. Positive heroism. Progressive... Progress cult? I thought it was progressivist cult, but never mind. Okay, now we can go for the armor genius. So our gun production now is tip top, so we want to still produce as many as we can. The level of gun pr guns we're producing now it will be insane. So right now we can uh, assign as many as we can. And our economy, you can feel now, is kind of getting more jump started, so we've got a lot more bite to our attacks. So I think at this point what we'll do is go for artillery. We also need to add on to these guys as well. So I think we'll go for engineers. 
we'll exercise them a wee bit as well, just to make sure we've got any low levelers. That's good. It's a really good idea to keep producing tank divisions because otherwise you'll end up in a situation where you focus too heavily on infantry and when the war starts you won't have any ability to organize any kind of tactical encirclements and whatnot. So it's, uh, I don't know, I found it's a good idea just to produce one tank division. Uh, recovery rate is good, I think we'll go for that one. German-Soviet Treaty, I always want to go for that because you want that medium tank. And then with Socialist Science to reduce the tech cost, which is good. Okay, so right now, oh, is that the Civil War just fired? No, it's not, nope. Going to get a very, 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 very late Civil War in this game. So we're going to go for Moscow and build one there and three there. And then we need to work on another one. It's best to take care of this as early as you can because otherwise you're going to end up in a situation where you just build them like, frantically around the map. Okay, Azerbaijan's a good one. Seven. Only one of them's already filled. Trying to focus on building as further east as possible. Because remember, if you build factories on the border with Poland, what's going to happen is when they get gobbled up by Germany, they're going to be able to use those factories against you. So it's a really good idea to try and avoid giving those factories to the enemy. Um, I think we're going to go with Azerbaijan. Radio, mechanized computing. As you see, we're producing an absolute ton of guns now, so we can keep making new divisions. Maintenance is done. We could start working on those, but we're not going to yet. Uh, Air Force is always useful, but they've already got the latest fighter anyway, so that's pointless. We'll go for the extra artillery, just to give artillery an extra little bit of bite to it. Are we going to get a civil war in Spain? What's happening here? Okay, so there's no one here that we could go for the unity guy, but that's not that important. You'd only go for that guy if you're losing really badly and you want to, in an emergency, sort things out. Socialist science and then the extra research slot. Japan has declared war on China. So at this point, you can start sending guns to China. The more you help out China, the longer you can delay Japan. And if, for all fairness, if Japan, if China gets an upper hand on Japan, that's good for you because that means you're gonna have to worry about le worry less about a large border with the Japanese. Now, probably there's a few people thinking this is a little bit overkill because I'm producing so many guns, but trust me, as the game goes on, you will need these guns. And if you get a massive surplus, that's totally okay as well because you'll end up using them anywho. And sending those, your Chinese players as many guns as you can is going to be worthwhile because you want to throw as many at them as possible because you need to... If you don't successfully repel the Japs, then you can just kind of slow them down. And that's what you want to kind of do as China. Okay, so at this point, you've got a choice. I suppose this is a good route to go, but you can't unlock this until 1941. Um, so, I mean, you don't really benefit from these because these are war-specific events. Actually, maybe you benefit from this one. I think this needs to be fired by an event, this one. The NKVD divisions. So this one gives political power, so that's pretty useless. This one gives extra research bonus for light aircraft, which is kind of cool. Kamikaze is as useless as the Soviet Union. Um, so, getting that infrastructure and getting these down is probably worthwhile. You eventually want to work down anti-fascist diplomacy to get the extra free forts. That's ideally what you want to do. Okay, we've got the extra research slot now. Uh, we could work on these, which we will do. 
No civil war still. We're going to get a really, really late civil war in Japan. Uh, Japan. China, Spain. I feel, actually, I feel like maybe I've just missed the civil war. Have I missed the civil war? Well, no, it's democratic, so... Oh, look, they've got the flag of Czechoslovakia. It's the same as the political map mode for Spain. Hmm. Illuminati confirmed. Artillery is done. I'm going to work on the extra equipment because that's going to be useful in the Spanish Civil War. Extra tank division. Okay, and uh, what we can do now is expand our tank division to give it more bite. We need extra reconnaissance and maintain those tanks as long as possible. We need the maintenance as well. And exercise you a wee bit so you don't drop down. Go for war economy. That's good. Excellent. Made a little landing here. I'm not sure how effective it's going to be because we are sending a lot of guns at them. A lot of guns. What's probably going to be a better idea? Let's have a look. When are we going to send them again? 21 days. So in that case, 21 days is we'll kill that off. And we'll just send them 50% of my production. This feels kind of a little bit overkill. You're probably thinking, it's like, Dave, you're sending them a lot of guns here. This is maybe a little bit crazy. I don't know. It's, um... Yet again, you, you want to maintain your eastern front. And it's just easy if China does the fighting for you. Because fighting in this terrain is awful, fighting it in the Siberia, because what you tend to do is you end up getting bogged down with attrition and whatnot, and the fighting's slow because you can't make breakthrough because the terrain's bad, so it's an area of the world you don't really want to be fighting, basically. If anyone's asking, yes, I'm using the No Man's Land mod, so this area in Siberia is cut off, centra, center of Australia, the jungles of Java, state 744, wow. And you've also got the, the Sahara cut off as well. I don't know, this seems to be uh, a thing that most multiplayer games tend to have now, so I just thought I'd go for it. Um, not yet. We're going to go for the extra computing machine, because we want to get that encryption decryption bonus. You're probably thinking, oh, Dave, upgrade your tanks, upgrade your tanks now, because I'm going to lose all of the ret retention, so I don't want to do that. I want to try and make my light tanks for as long as possible, and then switch out if need be. How are we doing for guns? Pretty good. Okay, we've got extra factories we can assign now. So this one's a good one because it's already got almost maxed out infrastructure, so it's nice and quick, this one. So we'll do that one. I think that was the one we gained from that national focus, wasn't it? The improved railroad network. I think it was, yeah. Railroad network. Railroad. This one too. Oh, we can only produce one there, so that's probably not that worthwhile. No, it is, it is, because... We're only producing one infrastructure, so in all fairness, it'll balance out that. Uh, there's one high up here, too. Yaroslav. Yaro, Yaro How are doing for guns? Pretty good. Make another two. 20 divisions been pumped out. The strength you've got as the Soviet Union is that you've got, for the most part, an unlimited amount of, like, steel, and you've also got an unlimited amount of manpower. So, it, what you can make up for the Germans' production force is you can make up for it by just having lots and lots and lots of divisions. So, look here, they've tried to push out and they've got encircled, and here they're struggling. And here they're not really doing that well, so, I don't know, it's looking pretty good at the moment. The plan is coming together. Okay, so now we can focus on our doctrine. So, I don't know. A lot of people don't like mass assault. They complain and bitch about it. But in all fairness, it's relevant for the Soviet Union. So, in a moment of panic, uh, you find yourself training divisions that might be weaker than full strength. So, in that case, you can deploy them 10% quicker, which is useful. Because it's usually at 20% you can deploy. And that will reduce them down to 10% of training. So, you can pump out divisions at crazy speed. As long as you've got the production for the guns, you'll be alright. Uh, this one, out of supply grace, I guess, okay. Uh, organization, max entrenchment, super important for defense. Lots of supply reduction, so you don't have to worry so much about logistics. Uh, in that case, what you can just do is focus on making troops, really. Don't worry about that supply. 
that's pretty good. Extra organization, mechs planning, supply reduction, reduce the combat width of infantry, that's not that great. Extra breakthrough, organization, extra organization, recovery rate for motorized, and that one's pretty OP as well. The reduction of a loss when moving by 25%, that's really strong too. A lot of people will go, oh, but damn, just go for the superior firepower or the mobile. No, 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 no. It works out relevant to the mass assault for the Soviets. You don't really know how the war's going to go. Who knows? The German player might be really, really good. You might push you all the way to Moscow or all the way to Stalingrad. And in that instance, you might be thinking, oh, no, I've already lost. But no, if you've got mass assault, you can pump out those extra divisions to fill out that front line really, really quickly. So don't underestimate it. It's really good. Why have we... Oh, there we go. We finally have a Spanish Civil War. Hallelujah. Okay, we're going to end this episode here, boys. If you have enjoyed this, remember to like and to subscribe. Drop us a comment below. And also, don't forget to turn on the notifications to be known about the future episodes of this series. Apart from that, guys, hope you have a good day. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.